You and your friends can leave now, or they can carry your fat ass out in a bucket. Alan Richens' Jack Reacher is the hero we deserve. A massive hulk of a man whose incredible physicality matches his sharp wit and intellect. He is capable of taking down armies with nothing but his bare hands, while outwitting the most cunning of villains. Today, we dive deep into some of the most badass moments from the first season of the Amazon hit series. Hey, mister, why don't you come here? We want to talk to you. No, you don't. Thug Battle, Episode 2. In Episode 2, Reacher meets up with a man named Spivey and finds himself flanked by two bad guys packing heat. One of them directs Reacher into the trunk of a car. No, he says, facing the two smaller men. It's too small. It'll be uncomfortable. A back and forth ensues. Reacher lulls the attackers into complacency by explaining the dangers of hesitation. Suddenly, he moves and seizes the gun from the nearest man before knocking him to the dirt. He then smashes the other's hand in the car trunk several times and tosses him aside like a toy. The first man rises to his feet and pulls out a knife. Reacher does the same, and the two hack and slash at each other, with our hero quickly gaining the upper hand. The bad guy headbutts Reacher, momentarily stunning him. Reacher returns the favor, sending the poor bloke to the ground again. The cops arrive to interrupt the standoff, but it's clear Reacher won this round. We already saw Reacher beat some villains in the premiere episode, so this bit is a little anticlimactic compared to the prison brawls. Still, our leading man uses his wits to outsmart the two henchmen, which is fun. The fact that he wields a knife like a pro is just icing on the cake. Police Car Scuffle, Episode 5 Throughout Season 1, Reacher finds himself in plenty of sticky situations. In Episode 5, he and his partner in crime, Neagley, find themselves stuck in the back seat of a patrol car with a not-so-good police officer. The bad guys, you see, threaten to torture Officer Ribido's family unless he kills Reacher. Through tears, the young man pulls a gun on his partner, Officer Awcoin, and pulls the trigger, blasting his brains all over the window. Reacher takes drastic measures and uses his feet to kick in the divider behind Ribido. Neagley offers support, and they bother Ribido enough to force him off the road. The patrol car rolls into a river and takes on water. Now Ribido has a choice. Stay and drown, or let Reacher rescue him and face a lifetime in prison. He chooses the former, and our heroes escape, primarily unscathed. It's an intense sequence that shows Reacher's and Neagley's ability to think on the fly and not panic under pressure. No, it's not a fight sequence, so I can't reasonably rank it higher than number 8, but there is enough kicking and mayhem to qualify it for a lower spot. Stairwell Smackdown, Episode 6 By Episode 6, Reacher finds himself knee-deep in scumbags. Following a meeting at the police precinct, Reacher, decked out in a shirt and tie, catches a ponytailed thug shadowing him and quickly sprints down an alley. A brief chase ensues, and the two men eventually trade blows next to some trash bins. A ponytail man pulls out a knife and does the typical hack-and-slash move, cutting our boy in the belly. Thinking quickly, Reacher leaps over a fence, arms himself with a displaced bicycle wheel, and fends off his enemy. He catches Ponytail's hand in the spokes, cracks a few bones, and lands a good shot to his face. When that effort proves futile, Reacher removes his tie and uses it to slap away Ponytail's attacks. Then, Reacher wraps the tie around the evil man's neck, breaks his foot against a guardrail, and leaps over the side of a stairwell, still clutching the piece of clothing. Reacher hangs five feet above the platform below, using his weight to choke Ponytail to death. His mission accomplished, Reacher drops down and wanders away to the tune of Norman Greenbaum's Spirit in the Sky. You may have seen a lot of movies and TV shows, but you'd be hard-pressed to remember one where a character died by strangulation with a tie. <laughs> Reacher refuses to get in a trunk, Episode 2. During Episode 2, First Dance, Reacher meets with Spivey, a crooked prison guard. Unfortunately, the rendezvous is a setup, and two ex-soldiers attack Reacher. At first, the hired guns encourage Reacher to climb into the trunk of their car, but the ex-military cop protests. It's too small, Reacher says. It'll be uncomfortable. After lulling the two ex-soldiers into a conversation, Reacher strikes, deftly handling their punches, guns, and knives with ease. The blend of humor and action helps the sequence stand out, but it still pales compared to other Season 1 action scenes. Ah! 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 
Roscoe and Reacher's team up, episode 4. In episode 4, in a tree, Reacher teams up with his love interest and partner in justice, Roscoe Conklin. A cop herself, Roscoe is pretty handy with a gun, and this sequence proves just how much she has Reacher's back. After coming under fire, Reacher and Roscoe split up, with Reacher leading the pursuers down a narrow alley. After killing one of the men, he struggles to fight off the second. An extended hand-to-hand -hand brawl ends, with Reacher's opponent holding him at gunpoint. Thankfully, Roscoe sneaks up and fires a perfect headshot. Despite its intensity, this scene falters slightly due to Reacher's missteps. Reacher vs. Home Invaders, Episode 7 Although a tad ridiculous, Episode 7 really leans into the comedy-action blend that makes Reacher the ultimate dad TV show. Reacher takes a page from Arnold Schwarzenegger's Commando. He covers himself in camouflage, loads a bundle of weapons, and camps inside Hubble's home. Earlier, he convinced corrupt Officer Baker that he was going to the house for evidence. Knowing Baker will send a group of men to kill him, Reacher goes shopping. He picks up weapons and necessary gear, heads back to Hubble's house, and waits to spring his trap. Predictably, four men in white, packing shotguns, arrive. Reacher executes their driver outside and then systematically kills the others one at a time. He slits throats, stabs, and stomps on necks. The final guy presents more of a challenge, and the pair nearly destroy the home before taking their fight outside, where Reacher gets knocked into a swimming pool. He promptly recovers and blows the guy away with a gun. Again, the only thing keeping this bit from reaching the top is Reacher's shocking difficulty with a relatively undersized man. This is Jack Reacher, people, not some average Joe off the street. Otherwise, the home invasion sequence is one of the more thrilling set pieces from the show. <laughs> Restaurant Brawl, Episode 5 For the most part, Reacher doesn't take things too personally. He's all business and doesn't often act on emotion. However, in the rare instance when he does, you best get your butt out of Dodge. KJ, one of the show's villains, learns this lesson the hard way. Foolishly, the man paints a not-so-kind word on the side of Roscoe's truck. Reacher arrives, looks at the vehicle, and speeds back into town. Then we cut to a restaurant where KJ does KJ things with his friends. Reacher pulls up a chair, picks at KJ's fries, and asks, What kind of man are you? A stupid man? A bitter man? Or are you just an insecure, spoiled rich boy hiding behind daddy's money? Fed up, KJ moves to respond, but Reacher slaps him so hard, he crumbles to the floor like a paper bag. Then, our boy easily beats the bejesus out of the other two goons and prepares to take down KJ. Unfortunately, the fight ends when Roscoe and Finley burst in with guns raised. This scene really demonstrates Reacher's desire to help those he cares about. Reacher vs. Sasquatch, Episode 3 There's a fun bit in Episode 3 where Reacher pokes around at a local bar for a man named Spivey. He spots a customer paying for a drink with a $2 bill, assumes he's a hard gambler in need of cash, and slips him some money in exchange for information. Another customer rises in the background, his massive frame blocking the light and urging the first customer to retreat into the crowd. Reacher sizes up this new individual, who attempts to push our boy around with not-so-veiled threats. Find yourself another bar, Sasquatch says, shoving Reacher in the chest. It's a bad idea. Reacher notes that the man is a boxer, a southpaw. You know, the thing about boxing? Too many rules, he says, before clipping Sasquatch in the groin and striking him in the face multiple times with his elbow. Sasquatch drops to the ground, blood covering his face. Reacher pulls him up by his collar and immediately gets answers to all of his questions about Spivey. It's a humorous moment that demonstrates Reacher's resolve. Of course, this guy doesn't mess around. If he asks you a question, telling him what he needs to know is probably best. <laughs> Alley Fight, Episode 4 Reacher and Roscoe loiter around their hotel and come under fire from two men, played by Vincent Kai and Maxime Lauren. Reacher tells Roscoe to split up and heads off in another direction with the bad guys close behind in a car. Smartly, Reacher ducks into an alley, spins, and shoots the driver when he attempts to follow. The second man continues his pursuit, and finally, he and Reacher come to blows. Surprisingly, our hero struggles to take the much smaller man down and finds himself staring down the barrel of a gun. Reacher accepts defeat and raises his hands in the air. 
However, as all bad guys in TV shows and movies do, the thug starts monologuing about how Reacher killed his cousin, and this is his chance for revenge, blah blah blah, giving Roscoe enough time to sneak up and shoot him in the head. You just killed my cousin. Now I'm gonna pinch your skull all over the place. Prison Cell Fight, Episode 1 When an inmate named JD, played by Amika Agata, harasses Hubble, Jack reaches his limit and suggests JD knock it off. JD doesn't think much of Reacher. It's a huge mistake, but the inmate isn't the only one to do it. The confines of the prison cell, paired with Reacher's hulking frame, do a lot to make the character into someone imposing. JD attacks, and Reacher knocks him out cold with a few sharp blows to the head. As icing on the cake, Reacher walks out with a new pair of sunglasses, courtesy of JD's men. Officially, this is when newbies to Lee Child's franchise realize Reacher's awesomeness. Bad guys, beware! If Reacher tells you to step aside, you must do as commanded, or you'll end up drinking through a straw for the rest of your life. The prison cell bid is unique in its simplicity. Reacher takes a few swings and easily overcomes an attacker. It's beautiful to watch, and an easy entry into the top three. Reacher vs. KJ, Episode 8 Reacher takes its time developing its characters in complex plot. Thankfully, it builds to a satisfying climax that gives every character something to do, or in this case, someone to fight. Roscoe takes on Teal, Finley battles Picard, and Neagley goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with a couple of faceless goons. Reacher locks horns with KJ, and following their brief dust-ups earlier in the season, their final confrontation pays off in a big way. With fire erupting all around, the pair exchange gunfire, KJ talks smack long enough to give Reacher time to sneak up behind him, and a furious fight commences. KJ charges with an axe, and Reacher swiftly dodges his attacks, and eventually tosses him into a pile of burning boxes, leaving him screaming and essentially charbroiled. It's over, Reacher declares. Indeed, following a lengthy investigation, a dozen fight sequences, and violent encounters, Reacher goes out with a bang. The heroes defeat the ruthless villains of Margrave and live to see